University of Toronto Professor Jordan Peterson has become a phenomenon. That's not an overstatement. Videos featuring him online get millions of views. His book, 12 Rules for Life, an Antidote to Chaos, is one of the biggest, maybe the biggest bestseller ever written by a Canadian author. In that book, Peterson questions the left's rhetoric on gender, and maybe for that, he's being targeted for destruction. The Guardian calls him dangerous. Vox just published a massive and almost unbelievably stupid piece accusing Peterson of, quote, reactionary politics that validate white, straight, and cisgender men at the expense of everyone else. Really mouth-breathingly stupid, but there you have it. Jordan Peterson joins us tonight. Professor, thanks for coming on. So, obviously, a hurt dog barks. You've done something that have, has made people upset. What do you think you've said that the left finds so provocative and upsetting? Well, I've pointed out quite clearly why they're factually incorrect and, and ideologically possessed. Possessed, I mean, is particularly on issues like gender. The, left, the radical lefties insist that gender is a social construct, and that's just simply not true. So the scientific data on that are absolutely crystal clear, and no reasonable scientist disagrees. And so they're all foaming at the mouth because I'm pointing, poking holes in their, in their cherished notions. And they like so, to think that people are completely malleable because that means they can be, people can be made over in their ideological image. So they're not happy about that. So when they say your ideas are dangerous, what they're really saying is your ideas are dangerous to them. I hope so. They're supposed to be dangerous to them. I make no bones about that. I'm not a fan of radical leftists. And look at what happened in the 20th century with radical leftist ideology. What has your job been like back in academia? I mean, you, you, you can't be one of many people who has these views where you live and work. Oh, yeah. Well, no, no. I think they're more common than you think. I mean, my views on gender, for example, and sex, they're, they're shared widely among people in the psychometric personality community. Anybody who studies personality and who's a credible scientist knows full well that the differences between men and women in personality are to be attributed primarily to biological factors. It's not, this isn't contentious. The only people it's contentious around are, are gender ideologues, and they've already lost the scientific battle, and so they've taken it to the legislative front to enforce their views. So they're really not contentious viewpoints. They're mainstream science, and they're I'm criticized all the time for spouting pseudoscience. It's like it's not pseudoscience. It's mainstream science, and, and, all, and, and people who know the literature aren't disputing this. It's been known since the, at least since the 1990s. Well, then why are people whose views are not rooted in science, but instead in emotion and superstition, dominating our public conversation and punishing anyone who doesn't disagree? Mm. How do they well, get so much power? Well, look, I actually think there's a technical reason for that, is that, you know, it's obvious that things can go too far on the right and they can go too far on the left. And it's kind of easy to put a box around people who go too far on the right. You can just look at claims of racial superiority. Right. But it's not so easy to put a box around people who go too far on the left. There's not a single thing you can point to that they do that has the same sort of red flag nature as claims of racial superiority. So it's hard for people who are left-leaning, say, and concerned with inequality and that sort of thing, to dissociate themselves from those who've clearly gone too far. And the problem is we really don't know where the red flags are in leftist territory. Now, for me, it's equality of outcome is a good you know, so-called equity. That's a red yes. flag, but it doesn't seem as immediately pathological as, say, claims of racial superiority. So it's harder for people on the left to dissociate themselves from the people who would, well, would do everyone in, essentially. So you drew the line at pretending that biological sex isn't real. I mean, that's how you first became famous, because you said, I'm not going to lie about science. Well, Do you think it's it was, a good place it, for the rest of us to start? Well, I think it's a reasonable place. I mean, the, the Canadian government built a social constructionist view of gender into the law, and that, that's just incorrect. I mean, the idea that biological sex, gender expression, gender identity, and sexual preference have no relationship to one another, that they vary independently. That there's, there's almost nothing you could claim that's more false than that. But now it's being written <laughs> into the law. Uh, well, it's, so, it's just patently absurd. And it, it, it's actually a, a, a telling commentary on the state of political discourse across the West that, that something like that could even happen. Yeah. But I think it's equality of outcome that's the real pathological desire. That's, that's, that's a bad one. I, I agree. But, I mean, I guess the good news is that taking a stand on behalf of obvious truths, there's a huge audience for it, and you're living testament to that. Thank you, Professor. Good to see you. No, good to see you, too. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right.